Hi, I'm Jean Schumacher, founder of Simply Plant Based, where I have a lot of programs to help you to change your health destiny. And today I have an amazing opportunity to interview Karen Duggan. And I have to say, I've heard her story, but oh my gosh, wait till you hear it. So Karen, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here today. Oh, Jean, I am so happy we're doing this. It's been so nice to talk with you over the last week, get to know you, and this is just the cherry on the top. So thanks. Well, what, okay, here's the million dollar question. What made you go plant-based? <laughs> Share with us your story. Well, back in 2008, I lost my dad to cancer. And exactly 10 weeks later, I too was diagnosed. So that was really the one, two punch that I needed to get my health on track. Um, you know, it's interesting. I, I grew up in this little part of St. Louis, one of the suburbs of St. Louis went to Catholic grade school, Catholic high school, just me, my brother, my parents, tight, little, very, very just loving family, pretty sheltered. Okay. Um, and didn't know really anyone growing up, I didn't know anyone who had cancer or diabetes or anything like that. And so, you know, in my thirties or actually late twenties, when my dad was diagnosed with cancer, he had prostate cancer, which is called the lazy cancer because it takes a long time for it to spread and then take you. So, you know, when, when my dad was diagnosed with cancer, we were like, what is this? What's going on? Like no one has cancer. And so for years and years and years, there were all these coming soon, big, you know, new, new chemo cocktails for him or whatever. And it just became a way of life that, you know, he had cancer. Well, then when he did pass and then I was diagnosed that again, I was just like, wait, what in what am I being punked? Like what's happening here? So, you know, and you know, I know I'm kind of making fun of the situation, but I was mourning the loss of my dad, trying to be a good daughter to my, my mom, be a good sister to my brother, be a good wife to my husband, try try to be a good friend, a good worker. I was in corporate America. And by the way, we were also rehabbing our house, gut rehabbing. So it like, I really like couldn't get away, get out of it. You know, I was just, just kind of tumbling through life. And I thought, okay, well, I've got to do what healthy people do, right? Whatever that was. And because I never really took stock in food and I never connected food and health, I, I thought, okay, well, what do healthy people do? Hmm. Well, they yoga. Well, they meditate. They do acupuncture. I don't know. I was reaching, I was reaching and none of those things stuck especially the meditation. I'm such a spaz. So I thought, well, I don't know. I mean, everyone's like, eat your greens, eat your greens, eat your veggies, you know? And so I thought, I don't know, maybe there's something to that. So I, I went to Dr. Google and I started just typing in vegetarianism, veganism, greens, health, healthy immune system, immune boosting foods, cancer, you know, all these things. And what kept coming up in the results was a vegan diet, a vegan diet, a vegan diet. Now here I am in 2008 in the middle of the country, right? You know, uh, conservative family, conservative ideals, you know, nothing, you know, too out there, I guess, lack of a better. And I thought, well, you know, vegans, that's kind of extreme. I can't be doing that. And so I they come from that planet vegan. Yeah. What the heck is that? How are you not going to have chicken and cheese, please next. So I, uh, I kept, I kept searching and searching and searching. Well, at the time I worked for a medical practice and made friends with a lot of the doctors and was very interested in, in all of this. And I said, can you teach me how to read medical studies and all these articles? And they say, yeah, yeah. So they taught me how to navigate that. And I started reading and reading and reading all these medical articles and all these studies and these clinical trials and all this. And I thought, well, son of a gun, there might be something to this. So it did take a while. 
And really in order just to check off a box and say, well, I gave it a try and it didn't work. Went home from work one day and in one fell swoop took all of the animal products out of our kitchen anything that had any animal products in it. So any of the crackers or anything like that, that had whey or eggs in it, threw it all away and went to the grocery store and learned that eating the rainbow was really where it was because nobody really said plant-based in 2008 it was still the, the, the V word. I went to the store and Jean, I'll tell you, I was just throwing things in my cart, green things and purple things and orange things and red things and white things and whatever. And I did not know what I was putting in my cart, hand to God, because I was, remember, rehabbing my house, was never just grew up on Campbell's soup and, and Tyson chicken breasts and let's see, uh, Velveeta cheese. I mean, you know, like just whatever. So at this time of my life, I was eating a lot of lean cuisine. I was the lean cuisine queen. It was oh, easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause all I wanted to do was be skinny and like not even worry about food. So, I got home and I thought, huh, well, it's interesting. I don't know what to do with any of this food because nothing has microwavable directions on it. Hardly anything has any labels on it. Right. And I just, I, you know, I just went to back to Google and just plant free and actually vegan recipes 101. And then I had all this food and I didn't know what to do with it. And nothing was really matching up. So I really didn't have any time. As I said, I was frustrated because here, this was my life. My husband and I would get up in the morning. We would go to, we had separate gyms. We would go to the gyms, we'd come home. We would take our showers. We would get dressed. We would go to our corporate jobs, come home, disrobe, put on gross clothes and start literally bringing down the walls and rebuilding because we were doing this gut rehab. So not only did I not have any, I didn't have any time. Yeah. I didn't have any time. I really wasn't interested in it and I didn't have a space to cook in, but I knew that I didn't, you know, I was not ready to clock out. So I, I, I was always the one to cook dinner at night. And I mean, cook. So one night I was just, you know, throwing some ingredients together, just assembling meals or just assembling food. And Tim was in this you know, makeshift living room. And we watched the news at like 10 or 10 30 at night, we would have our, our dinner and then we would go to bed. So that was like, that was our life for many, many, many months, M- maybe years. I don't know. It's kind of a fog. Wait, and so with I, cancer. yeah, I had it. Yeah. I had it. Yeah. I, yeah, I had it. I went through, I had cancer. They removed the tumor. So I was healing from that as well. Yeah. So there's okay. all this stuff going on. And so it's 1030 at night and Tim is sitting there in his gross clothes and I've got my gross clothes on and we've got like plaster dust all over us. And I hand him this God knows what plate of beans and lettuce and who knows what it was, you know, and he looks up at me, Jean, on this couch and I'm looking down at him with this food. And it was just, you could cut the tension with a knife. And I said, Tim, what, 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 just what? And he goes, Karen, whatever this is that you're doing, I think that it's probably a good idea. It seems rational, but oh my God, with this food, you are going to kill us both. And and so I just started just like, like this release of this happy or, you know, like gross cry, but release. And he's kind of like, I'm real sorry. I'm like, it's okay. I'm so bad at all this. You know, I just, I miss my dad and I don't know what to do. And I just don't, you know, uh, you know, he's like, it's okay. It's okay. So hot sauce. No, I like the food. I like the food. It's okay. Don't worry. So I, you know, we were both like, you know, this totally sucks, but I don't know what else to do, you know? So as I said, hot, hot sauce always cures all. So we just put hot sauce on, you know, and just ate and went to bed, whatever. So the next day without, you know, I didn't know, but he, he sought out a vegan cooking class here in St. Louis. And I didn't even think about doing that because I went into this thing, kicking and screaming again. I just wanted to check a box and say, yeah, tried it. No, no, thanks. And so we went to this cooking class at whole foods and the instructor was a full class, one big table, one long, like farm table. 
And the instructor who I'm still friends with was slinging plants like nobody's business. She was having a great time. She was sending out these dishes that I don't know, five, six ingredients, maybe they were so delicious. So easy. She's talking with us all. We're all talking with each other. And I thought, well, Oh, I I can probably do this, you know, not forever, but you know, still I can give it a try. Well, she saw that I was so excited after class about all of this that she called me up and asked me to be her assistant. So I mean, I, you could have peeled me off the ceiling. I was so excited. And she, so for two and a half years, I was her assistant and it was just twice a month. We would go to, we had two whole foods here at the time and twice a month, I was her pack mule. You know, I would bring all the stuff in and I would hand out all the recipes and do the dishes and, you know, just kind of learn as she was. And, and then she, she had, she left town because her husband was transferred and Whole Foods, I know I was like, okay, thanks Whole Foods. That was totally fun. And I'm still like primarily vegan at the time. And Whole Foods says, what, what are you doing? Like, get back in here. You're going to teach. And I said, no, 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 no. I've never taught anybody anything, nor do I want to. And they said, okay, well, here's the paperwork. And I said, no, I seriously, this is not my thing. And so I get home and I tell Tim and he's like, are you kidding me? You've got to do it. You light up like a Christmas tree when you come home from these things. And I'm like, Tim, come on now. You know, God bless that Tim. God bless that Tim. Uh, he, he, well, no, he is my biggest, my biggest cheerleader. He is. And um, so we filled out the paperwork and they hired me and I will tell you, Oh my God, Jean, if you can remember the time you've been the most intimidated, intimidated, the most imposter syndrome ever, like not worthy, not worthy. That was my first class. Like I, I thought, holy cow, these people are coming in and spending money and time with me. I have got to deliver. So that's when I decided to go to PCRM. And then that's, I said, that's how I started all this. And here we are 13 years later. For the people who don't know, what is PCRM? Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Dr. Neil Barnard started the organization in 1985. It's kind of a twofold organization. I see it as so they do a lot for the animals and then they also do a lot for health. In 2011, I went to PCRM and applied for their food for life program. It was not something you can just sign up to do. And I was accepted and I did it. And I was like, at the end, and it's Jean, you and I have talked about this, like after the four or five days, whatever it was, I just was like physically holding my head. Like I have to keep this information in here. I have to, I have to figure out a way to like compartmentalize it so I can regurgitate it in ways that people can understand it and they can, it can really help them. (laughs) So it's a great program, really great program. There's, there's a food for life. We call them FFL coaches worldwide. And we have a really great network. Cravings. How did you handle cravings? You know, I will tell you, like, I, I think I'm one of the very few who does not have that cheese. My brain doesn't light up with that. Okay. I, don't, I, I know, I know. One, th- I don't, I didn't really have, I don't know, I guess because I lost my dad and then I had cancer. Like, you know, like, okay, I, why would I go down that path again? You know, Those are so, big wise. Okay, let's talk about the cancer because yeah, cancer is, is all about dealing, you know, with the immune system. So yes. share with us what you've learned about foods. The darker the better. Picking plant-based foods, dark leafies, dark berries, minimally processed foods are going to be most health supportive. And so that's what I do my best to stick to day in and day out. And you know, I I was for many, 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 many years, so incredibly strict. I find that I'm not so much, or at least maybe I don't like beat myself up so much if I go out with friends and have, you know, a little bit too much wine. It's so important also, especially in this day and age of of COVID and, you know, growing up and not, you know, you don't make friends the way you used to in college and high school. And it's just life time with friends and loved ones becomes so much more important that being with my, my girlfriends and my family 
out and having a good time is also important. But when, when we are out, I'm making the best decisions I possibly can. Right. And thank goodness that the world has opened up and become more accepting to people on a plant-based diet. I know, I know. So I think maybe it's just, I'm not feeling the guilt as much because I can actually go out with more ease than right. before. Right. Yeah. Well, you started a center for plant-based living in St. Louis. I know. Walk us through this journey. Cause like that is not one of the places that I would go to for like plant-based food. In 2011, I started a company called STL Veg Girl. STL for St. Louis, not for Seattle. Everyone thinks that's Seattle. St. Louis. My tagline or motto is a plant on every plate. And I've never been this big no person. I'm not no animal products, no, no, none. Because then you're really putting the emphasis on it's a negative, right? So let's add more plants to our plate and then just scooch out those animal products. I started STL Veg Girl and I started doing classes, mainly PCRM classes until I started doing my own. And now I do both in you know, grocery stores and in schools and community centers. And then uh, from there, I started, I, I was a personal chef for two years. And then that morphed into a personal delivery uh, company that I had for two and a half years. But STL Veg Girl has been a lot of things here in St. Louis, but it was never, but it was always a moving target. So like when I had cancer, or I hear of other people having cancer or diabetes or heart disease or any of these horrible chronic illnesses that we hear way, way too often, you know, you, you think, well, what should I do? Should I go to yoga? Should I meditate? Should I go get acupuncture? Should I look into food? What kind of food should I look into? You know, because everybody's on a different diet now. Right. Well, so I thought, you know, when somebody wants to understand what more about a plant-based diet or just adding more plants to their plate, I don't want to be a moving target. I don't think, it, and not just me, I just don't think there should be a moving target out there, you know, solely. So that's why, that's one of the reasons I wanted to open up a brick and mortar. I was laying in bed one night, it was about, yeah, it was a 2017. And I'm also a, pro, a health coach, certified health coach through Well Coaches. And I thought, you know, why are there so many people who, do become well after adopting a plant-based diet, do reverse their type two diabetes, their PSAs go down. My gosh, you know, they lose weight. They feel better. They sleep better. They're be I mean, it could go on and on. Why then do they start to revert back? And then of course, you know, all these illnesses creep back in. And I thought, you know, it's gotta be support. Support's gotta be key, you know, because if you think about it, Whenever somebody changes a lifestyle habit, whether it be trying to, you know, not smoke anymore, not drink anymore, exercise more, or God forbid, change your diet, you need support. And it's pretty easy to find support from people who are going to cheer you on. If you're going to stop smoking, stop drinking, exercise more, like those are more, I guess. The norms. The norms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but if you change your diet, oh my God, not only where are you going to get your protein? Well, yeah. And also when you change your diet, you've got to be two things. You are the weird one, by the way, and you've got to be a scholar. You have got to know all things right away about what you are doing and you have to prove it to everybody. That is insane. That is so insane. That is so insane. And that is so not fair. So. Right. You know, if somebody can't hold their own and prove to other people why they're doing what they're doing, then it's really hard to keep doing that. Yeah. So I thought, okay, no, that's why we need to, we need to open up a brick and mortar. So people know where to go for resources, support community, and right. whether you come once or you come month again, or you tell somebody about it, I just want to be here for people when they need the information. Yeah. And it's called the Center for Plant-Based Living. What do you offer at your center? And I think you have a membership program too. We do. Yeah, which is new and that's out of COVID. So before COVID, we did 100% in-person classes and it was going gang busters. I can comfortably hold 20 people 
in a class here, which is like all I can feed people in one in one time. I had like local celebrities in to do classes, and then that money went to local, you know, organizations around here. Actually, had mastering diabetes guys in my friends Robbie and Cyrus. They came in right before the release of their book. But then we did a stint on our St. Louis Fox station, and then that money went to a charity. It, it was so fun. We were doing so much here. Jim Loomis, who's our, and who is in Game Changers, is our medical director, and he comes in four or five times a year and does programs with us. So it was a lot of fun. But then, boom, seven months later, COVID hits. We started doing some virtual stuff on, on Facebook, just trying to give that a little go to see if that was a thing. And that has morphed into, which I want to say 50, but maybe like probably even more than that, 60 to 70% of our business now is uh, virtual classes. And, you know, we, we were doing so many virtual classes. I thought, well, I'm not going to get rid of those. I mean, that's great. You know, that's great education. Just wrapped it all up into a membership. We have this membership that is, I call, I've started to call it like a streaming membership because I've set it up like a Netflix account. You can log in and look at any class anytime you want, but then also you have free access to virtual upcoming classes so we can cook together. And then there's a monthly call, a monthly group call. Nice. Yeah, Beautiful. it's fun. It's yeah. fun. Well, has your family followed your lead? My brother, so it's my brother, no. My mom, about 80%. Yes, she's lost 60 pounds. She looks fantastic. And my husband, yes. Well, about 90%. And here's the thing. You, it's interesting that you said, follow your lead, because I have never asked any of my friends, any of my family to do this with me. Right. Um, and they just, I, I have, I have some friends who are now more focused on plant-based eating, but they're, they're not plant-based. They just pay attention. And but my husband is primarily, yeah, he actually just went, he just had a, a annual, they go shooting, you know, hunting once, once a year. And he knows to not bring anything home. So, and he also doesn't eat it. <laughs> so he tells me. <laughs> okay. Well, what was the most difficult obstacle you faced going plant-based? You know, I put myself in quite a position without even really knowing it of, of becoming an educator and then having to really learn pretty quickly. And even to this day, I still feel the imposter syndrome. So I think that, you know, especially being, I think I can safely say the first of it, of, of my kind here in St. Louis, leading the plant-based pack, um, I really had to be and have to remain kind of in the forefront, right? Like I have to know what's coming down the pike. And um, I, I think that's been the most challenging thing is just being, trying to stay ahead of things so that I can remain a, a good steward of what I'm doing and be a continual educator. and you know, I, you know, I put myself in that position and, and sometimes I'm like, oh shoot, you know, uh, but, but it does, it does keep me honest and it does keep me, keep my nose in the books. So walk us through a day of food. What does that look like? So, you know, it's, you, people, people ask, oh gosh, do you guys just always eat so well all the time? And your husband, my gosh, you know, I'm like, no, are you kidding me? The cowboys children have no shoes, you know, like there is, I'm, I'm testing recipes all the time. And, you know, if I'm here at the shop all day, we just call the, this place, the shop. And I, I don't go home and I'm not eating at all. Cause I've been testing all day and, and I've thrown food away that hasn't worked out. And then Tim has to fend for himself. So, you know, it's, it's not, like a traditional, you know, you go shopping on Sunday and you eat all week. So I think the only thing consistent would be my breakfast and that's coffee. And for the last several months, it's been a rice cake, a half of an avocado, red onion, and sometimes some hot sauce. 
that is it. Okay. But, you know, I know that that's not, that's probably not ideal, but, you know, I, I make sure that I always get my greens and my dark berries and all that kind of stuff in because that's what I'm cooking with in my classes, right? So that's the kind of foods I always, I always have around anyway. Well, what are, talked about your favorite dishes. Let's talk food. Come on. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We also do here at the shop private events. So birthday parties and showers and dinner parties, whatever. The last couple of dinner parties, and I always give people choices, but the last couple of dinner parties, I've been making a chickpea and jackfruit korma. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I know. And that's, that's one of those things that, you know, you can, you can batch cook, you can batch cook a lot of things, but that's, that's a delicious one. One of the, my favorite salads for years and years and years, and I teach it in my top 10 class and I teach it whenever I get the opportunity is just this kale. Well, I guess it's a garlicky lemony tahini dressing. So it's a creamy dressing. There's like four or five ingredients. And I just, I massage it into kale and I teach people how to cut kale, how to massage it correctly so that everyone loves it and everyone always loves it. So those are my two, I think, go-tos, but I always have things in the fridge to just pop. I have a whole, I have 15, well, not 15 pounds anymore because I've gone through so much, but a girlfriend of mine this summer went to Michigan and brought back a 15 pound box of fresh blueberries. And I keep those in the freezer. And so that is actually when I have a sweet tooth and I just do it every day anyway, because I know that blueberries are so great for you. I grab a little ramekin and just, just scoop out the blueberries and have those every day. So um, that's, that's actually a consistent as well. All right. Well, what are you most proud of? You know, I was, <sighs> thank you for giving me a heads up on this one, because this is, this was tough. I, th I think that I'm, I don't know if I would say I'm most proud of, but I really am certainly grateful to the St. Louis community for, for opening their arms to me and letting me exist um, because food is a, is a funny thing, as you know, and it's very personal and it's very subjective. And I, I don't like to come at people and say, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Cause I mean, just like anything else, you know, don't look out the door. What's out the door. You know, like you want, we we don't ever want to follow somebody else's instructions. So I do my best to educate people and let them make their own decision because truly me to say to another person, this is what you need to do is almost like me saying, you don't know what's best for yourself. And how awful is that? So I think just providing people with resources and opportunities and community is the way to go. And and me and the two women who work with me are absolutely wonderful, Anne and Carla. And my husband has been, I mean, my goodness, a huge support. I mean, he built this place. So I, I'm grateful to the St. Louis community and I'm most proud of what we've all built together and been able to keep going, especially through COVID. Awesome. That is just awesome. And I just, I really kudos to you for doing this and for, for building your dream. I mean, to, to help other people. I mean, honestly, it's pretty darn amazing. Thanks. Thanks. So what are, what are three things someone can do to help start this journey? Yeah, that's three things I think is, is a tall order. I'll give you, I'll give you three things, but I typically will start someone with one thing. Number one, if you want to and this, I mean, if somebody's listening to this podcast and when they, they hit end or whatever, they're going to do one thing, they're going to get oil out of their life. That's it. And even if you change nothing, like even if you are, but, but, but my extra virgin olive oil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Really? Even that, even that, even that, even that. Yes. Even, even, yes. even, even if it's pressed by virgins on the seventh, yes, solstice pressed, of the seventh month, pressed, pressed, pressed by extra virgins. <laughs> okay seriously, not the best thing for you. And people are going to ask right now. And I'm going to say, listen, yeah, I know there's those new studies out saying that, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, that is good news about a bad habit. My friend, olive oil, all oils, doesn't matter which oil, sesame, coconut, canola, it doesn't matter. Okay. 
one tablespoon is going to be 125 calories. That tablespoon is going to carry along with it 14 grams of fat and zero fiber. That is 100% fat, my friend. Do you want that in one tablespoon? Do you want that in one tablespoon? That is the science. That will never change, okay? And when you are adding oil to a pan because you're going to start sauteing your vegetables, you're not going to go, you're going no. to go, 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 go. So you're yeah. going to add 600, 800, a thousand calories right there. When you're making your salad dressings, because you think that you're being so good, you've got to watch your recipe because if it calls for salad dressing or if it calls for olive oil or whatever oil, it's going to call, it's going to call for either a third or a cup, a third or a half of a cup of olive oil. This I know I was going back looking at some of my recipes oh. and I'm like, a half a cup of oil, a third of a cup of oil, a cup of oil. And I'm like, and you oh wonder why you wonder why you're not losing weight because if people don't equate oil with that many calories. I, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't until I learned, I mean, you have to learn these things, you know, so everybody gets a pass in the beginning. Right. Um, yeah, sure. So the first thing would be get rid of oil. And I mean, oil that you're using. So educate yourself on how to do a dry saute. And I want oil out of all your packaged goods, out of all your sauces, out of all your condiments. I want all the oil out, okay? Number two, I would say, these are not in order, okay? Number two, I would say, start upping your fiber, okay? If you have never even looked at fiber in your life, never thought about it, that's okay. I want you to start at, make sure you get 15 grams a day. 15, 20 grams a day. Okay. And you think that's a lot, not a lot. Look at the can of chick, look at a, a can of chickpeas. Okay. Right. You will be, if you really start paying attention to it, you will get up to that 20 grams by lunch. Okay. Now the next week, I want you at 30 grams. The next week I want you at 40 grams. If you can get up to 50 in the next two weeks after that, give your, give your gut a little leeway. Yeah. You need some that, time. Get, you got to cut some slack because your gut biome oh, needs a little bit of time to adjust to that. That's exactly right. And some, you know, so many people say, oh God, Karen, are you kidding me? This, this plant-based diet is not for me. I is killing my gut. And you know what? It, you're right. If, if, if you start eating a certain way and then you are in pain, your, your brain is going to say, Nah, no, that's not for you. I get it. Okay. But if you think about it, if you've not been to the gym in a while, right. Or if you've never been to the gym, good, you, go good, in there, good, good analogy. Yeah, you go in there and you just rock it out and you come the next day, you can't walk. Uh, yeah. uh, you, know what? You, uh, uh, you are not saying, you are not saying to myself, you're not saying to yourself, Oh my gosh, I should never do that again. No, you're like, this kills, but damn it, I did some good work, right? It's right. the very same thing. You've got to train your gut, just like you've yep. got to train your body. So slow, 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 right. slow. Yeah. The third thing would be when you start looking at resources, cookbooks, I say find one oil free whole food, plant-based cookbook that you like, just one. And I mean, seriously, one, sit down. What's your favorite? I, I gotta say, I think Forks is great. I do. I think, I think they do a great job. Yeah, okay. I do. They have, they have some really great beginner, even more so beginner than that would be Lindsay Nixon's Happy Herbivore. I think those are very good, very 101 books. My favorite, bar none, is the Kim Campbell. Her oh, oh. Pure Nation. Yeah. Yeah. Her kitchen. I just, mm -hmm. I got to put a plug in for my, for my cam because yeah. what I love about her recipes is that she uses stuff that you will find in your kitchen. Like she's not going to use something that you're going to buy once and use once in one recipe and never use again, or you can't pronounce the name of whatever spice it is. Yeah. No, she uses normal, regular things and her well, food is amazing. And to that point, and you're right, I have, I've tried, I have one of her cookbooks and I can remember thinking, yeah, these are, these are good. Yeah. But to your point about using ingredients, that's why I say stick with one cookbook because, and then what I want you to do is sit down with your family members, if you can get them, 
sit down with everybody and go through every single recipe and dog ear each one that just looks remotely interesting. Right. And every time you're going to cook, because you're not going to cook every night, I get it. You know, you're going to do what you can which you, with the time you have. You're going to cook only recipes from that book. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to buy the same ingredients over and over again. You're going to learn how to use the same ingredients over and over again, because cookbook authors within the same pages of one book use the same ingredients over and over again. So you'll learn how to use the same ingredient many ways. Also, you're going to start to anticipate what's coming next because you're going to understand, you're going to get used to the cadence of that author's writing, speaking, and working. So you'd be like, oh, I know what that means. I got it. I got it. It's such a great learning tool to just stick with one book all the way through. And because by, by the time you get to the end of that book, you will know so much more than you would have ever thought by right. zipping around to different books. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's one of the things around my house is like, if I'm trying a new recipe, the first question is, is this a make again? You know, and sometimes mm -hmm. like, you know, like, oh my God, the dog didn't even eat that one. No, <laughs> no. We've had a few of those. We've had a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, no, no. But that's just as important too, to know what you don't like, you know? So the ones that I had, and I put a big X through it, you know, it's like, nah, but I never again. Too. Yeah, but I keep those too. And the reason I do that is because I, to know what I like and what my husband like, because he has no choice in this matter because I cook. And yeah. so he eats, I cook, he eats. It's, yeah, he thinks that's was wonderful. But anyway, so actually I've got him started to cook with me because I'm, you know, now back in the, in the classroom. So I need some help because we batch cook. We do it on the weekends. So excellent. Um, yeah. So he's, he's learning. He's learning how to use the Instant Pot and how to sa dry saute in the Instant Pot. So he's stepping up. He's stepping his game up. He's got, he makes a great baked beans. Oh my God. I've got the, my recipe. We've got it down. And he is actually making baked beans and they are delicious. And so we make a big pot of it. And that goes for like, I don't know, two weeks, you know, in the oh my gosh. batch cook ahead of time. We cook once on Sunday and we eat many times. So, That's the way to do it. It really yeah. is. I know. I know. Yeah, cool. I, I, you know, I do it a couple of times. I have done it a couple of times and I do it more in class because I have right. to feed 20 people, right. but yeah, I, I, I sometimes have a hard time getting my ducks in a row and doing that. But when I do it, it's like, thank goodness, you know? Well, and here's the thing in the morning, I make my smoothie. Okay. So I make that done. And then I take the food out of the refrigerator that's already prepped and they're in glass dishes and I put them into, it's called the mini hot logic. Have you heard of this? No, I haven't. No. Mini hot. That's fantastic. It's almost like a warming tray on the bottom and it's, it can fit like a nine by 13 casserole. That's the bigger one. But it also has a smaller one that's what I call like the lunchbox size. It's a six cup, the square Pyrex dish. It fits perfectly in that. And actually that's what it was made for, to, for that dish. <laughs> and the nine by 13 can hold two of those side by side. So what I do is in the morning, after I make my smoothie, I put those dishes into the mini hot logic. And this is my kind of technology. You plug it in, it's on. You unplug it, it's off. <laughs> that's my level of, I love that. Love it. So I'll plug it in and when we're go to eat, you know, we want, I come down from teaching and I have a break, I go and get something out of it. It's piping hot and it's delicious, you know, and the food. And here's the best part is they have a converter that you can plug in, you know, your cigarette lighter. So like when we travel, we plug that in. And so when we stop, because there's virtually no place that I can go and eat out because I just can't handle salt, salt and oil. It will oh. raise my blood pressure like that. Okay. Yeah. So I just can't, I can't, so mm -hmm. I can't risk my health. My health is worth working for. So yeah. when we're on the road, so what I do is I'll plug that in as soon as we get in the car and we start our journey. And then when we're hungry, we stop along the way and get out, you know, at a rest stop, rest area. Um, yeah. Even we've gone into some of those places that have tables in the middle and we'll bring our food and people are like looking over like, Hey, where'd you get that? You know, yeah. like, I don't see that here. You know, like, yeah, that's oh, beautiful. That what, are you, what are you eating? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but it's, and it's true. And it just makes it so easy to do that, especially even now at home. You know, I don't like the way the microwave heats food up or, you know, that's a whole other conversation about the microwave. So I'm not a big fan of that. 
but it's it's once you've already got the dishes prepared they just need to be gently warmed so yeah. this does it beautifully does it beautifully and when i go to like when we do like you know family events and stuff like that you know because like i'm the only one in my family who's done this okay and yeah they're like yeah whatever so instead of I, yeah you're the one who has great health right exactly exactly a hundred percent hundred percent anyway so what i do i in the beginning i tried to bring all these dishes and then you had to get into them you know and cook and get them hot and do all i said you know what forget this forget this so I bring a salad that everybody can eat. And then I bring my mini hot logics and I have two of the big ones and I fill them up. And I, as soon as I get there, I plug them in so that they're gently warming up. So when we go to sit down, first of all, everybody eats a salad. Okay, fine. And I'll bring my own hors d'oeuvres and then everybody eats a salad. And then I bring my dishes out and I put them on the table and people are like looking over at my dishes like this and going, hey, can I have some of that? Because like if I make my spring pea risotto, I have to make sure I get some first because <laughs> they know that dish and they love that dish. Love that dish. That's awesome. Oh so, my gosh. That is you know, so, so awesome. So I put that out on the table and then I've got my food. It's hot. I don't have to go work in the kitchen and, you know, get in their way because they're trying to get food out for, you know, the whole, the gang. Yeah. And then I bring a dessert and, and I make my chocolate peanut butter pie. Who does not like, oh. like chocolate and peanut butter together? I mean, like to die for. Oh so that recipe know, absolutely oh. got you covered so it, it, and it's so easy to make and it's ridiculously delicious like so good and yeah so that's how i handle it that's how i survive you know the the going to the other places for food yeah. uh, but i use yeah. the mini hot logic a lot and it just it's made my life so much easier and so it just it, it makes it work it makes it work and especially like if you have to go to to work you know, the first thing when I was, you know, in a brick and mortar classroom teaching, as soon as I got to school, I would take my food and put it in the mini hot logic. So whenever I could stop and eat and have lunch, then I had a hot meal prepared. I had right. it ready to go. So it was, it was wonderful. And especially like right after lunch, then I would take and put my potatoes in for the potato hour because about three o'clock, four o'clock in there, you're just like looking around going, uh, this telephone look book is looking pretty tasty, a little salt on it, you know? <laughs> Because there's well, nothing. Fiber in that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I would bring the potatoes for my potato hour with a little baracha sauce. Ooh. Mm, yeah. In case you haven't heard of baracha. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I, I thought you said sriracha. No, it's no. baracha. Baracha. Oh, baracha. It's a vegetable sriracha sauce. Deliciousness. Oh, anyway. Oh, okay. I know. No. <laughs> it's made by, it's called True Made Foods. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I've heard of them deliciousness yeah okay well karen thank you so much for sharing your story you truly are an amazing inspiration and i'm so proud of what you're doing that you have this place to go to now you have this membership and uh, you know just all the things that you're offering so thank you so much for all you do oh jean thank you and thank you for your friendship this has been getting to know you has been just such a highlight so so thank you for all you do and all the ways that you help people as well. So thank you. And I hope to keep working with you in the future. You know, that's going to happen. <laughs>